Hello and happy to be with you today to demonstrate the new feature coding workflows that we've added or enhanced in TBC version 4.10. I'm going to go ahead over to my view filter manager and turn those off, RTK vectors and total station. And now we have a series of many points. This tutorial data set is available online so you can follow along with me with the tutorial page. Um, this data set is set up um, properly with all the feature codes and everything that you need to get going. So without further ado, I said process feature codes. I will pick the JXL, the data set I want to process, and I'll go process sources. I do not want to view the feature code report right now. Um, first of all, making the attributes and the features more accessible, easier to find for you through a series of three different enhancements. To start, I'm going to go into select points, and you'll see here now attribute name and attribute value are listed. So, for example, if I wanted to find all broadleaf trees of type equal to elm, I can pick the name broadleaf tree type and the attribute value elm, say apply, and I can see all of the broadleaf trees in the project that were coded BT for broadleaf tree that were um, given the attribute of elm. Very similar over in the advanced select command. I can now also search by uh, attribute. I will select all data, I'm going to look for points, and then I have the option to uh, search by data with the following property, and attribute now is in this nice long list. Find my broadleaf tree of type, and I can um, put in an operator equal or not equal, I'll say equal to elm tree, hit apply, and all of the elm trees in my project will be selected close out of these and show you one more the feature spreadsheet in the data tab has also been updated uh, when I launch that now I see um, two options here features to display and attributes to display I can select all attributes or I can unselect all I'm focused here on my elm trees I will go and select just the broadleaf tree and all of the points with uh, code broadleaf tree are shown. Now in the types, I could just sort by just clicking up on the type and you can see there's two hickories, uh, two cherries, and the rest appear to be elm trees. But in a compl more complicated list, I could also just show those types. I will drop the photo attribute, I will drop the spread and the trunk. Those disappear and now I can see and sort just by the type. Now this is a parking lot. Um, you can see here there's an entranceway to the south, entranceway to the north, some islands um, with those trees, those elm trees that we just got to know a little bit. Um, the next enhancement I want to show is a slight tweak to the join point uh, line control code. And I'm going to zoom in to my data set oh, a little too much. Uh, in the upper corner here, click on this line and view its properties. Uh, it is an area of riprap. It is coded from 0.897, 901, 902, 903, 904, 905. Um, and you can see that there's the riprap code RPR, ST, control code to start, 901, RPR, and then all the way through to uh, 905 where it gets the RPR and the code. But let's suppose that there are two lines of riprap here. Um, let's say between 897 and 90, uh, 902 and then another one from 903 to 905. Could do some quick modifications and throw in a 1 behind our riprap code. Put in our end control code. Let's start 
riprap line number two. And uh, modify our codes that way. Now, to, for those ch uh, changes to take effect, we want to reprocess our uh, FXL. And now I've got a, uh, a gap now because I've got two separate lines of riprap. Now, supposing that uh, I come back in after the fact and say, yeah, no, actually, I do want to join those lines together. Sure, I could recode them. Um, but for the sake of this example and this enhancement illustration, we can use the join point code. Um, in this feature code library, it is uh, JPT, and then it'll look for the point to join itself to. Then go back into our process feature codes, reprocess our sources, and you can see now it appears that 902 and 903 have joined. When I click on the line itself, it's actually still two lines. All we've done is basically extended this riprap1 line into riprap2. Um, the enhancement is right here, you're looking at it. In the previous versions of TBC, this line segment from 902 to 903 would be a separate line, um, and the enhancement is now a continuation of that first line from 902 into 903. So we've got one line here, two lines here, where in the past it'd be one line, another line, and then a third line um, finishing this off. All right, next enhancement is the locking geometry. So we've got our riprap one line. You notice here, on the right in the properties the feature, there's our riprap, and then we've got a new parameter here called locked, and it's set to no. The options, opposite of no, is yes. Those are our options. What this means is that any change, any minor change I make to this line, such as, let's say I wanted to move um, the location of this vert vertex here from 901 to a, a free snap point. So it's locked, no. I'm going to edit this line string. And move the geometry off of that point 901. And I have made a change. I don't want to lose that change. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made it in the first place. And so the locked attribute gets triggered and flipped to yes from no. So now, watch what happens. If we go back and we ever needed to reprocess our feature code library, sure, the reprocessing occurs, but you'll see since this geometry was locked, it didn't reprocess. My change was saved. Um, particularly useful if you've got a lot of data or a, a large project area with a lot of feature codes that you needed to go through and QA a little bit, maybe make a, a couple of tweaks here and there. Um, those tweaks will automatically trigger that locked value to yes, and when you reprocess the feature code library, your changes shall, be, uh, shall remain. Back in the process feature codes, you'll see there's now a drop-down menu to remove processing. Everything in our parking lot gets removed except for the geometry that was locked. If I did want to get rid of everything, click on the drop down arrow, say remove all processing, and that will remove everything. Last and certainly not least is we've been working on improving our interoperability uh, with Autodesk products, um, specifically the Map 3D and Civil 3D that can support the uh, attribution and the property sets. Um, we have added a enhancement to our export in TBC version 4.10 to now export uh, features and attributes. Launch the export command, opening up the DWG export, make my selection, pick a DWG version. Uh, I've got uh, Civil 3D uh, year 2018, so I will pick DWG 2018. And you'll see here, there's a new option to export attributes, and that's set to yes. And I 
export my DWG. And now opening the drawing in Civil 3D, I can see my drawing. Check out the properties of one of these trees, for example. It's a block. And in the extended data in property sets, I now see it's one of those elm trees that we've been looking at with a broadleaf tree coat, a spread of 8 meters, a trunk diameter of 0.33 meters, and the type of elm. So now you can export attribute and feature data via the property set container into Autodesk environment. Thank you for watching. Hope you've learned a little bit more on how we've made feature coding even easier and much more improved in TBC version 4.10.